Okay, we're with Paul on the phone, and uh, Paul has a remarkable way of gardening. I'm not going to go too long on the introduction because I want everybody to hear as much as we can from Paul about uh, what we're doing. Are you there with us, Paul? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Paul, really quick, uh, let, let's kind of get into this. I'd like to give people a little bit of background on more so than, than what the gardening method is. How did you discover your method of gardening, the, the gardening that you've been using for a number of years? How did that first come about? Well, I moved up from Washington to Washington State from Southern California with the intent of growing food for my family. We bought a five-acre five parcel, built a house, and drilled a well and, and experienced a real challenge. Our well produced one half a gallon of minute, a minute. And I realized I would have no water to do a garden or fruit trees. And so I approached God and said, God, how am I going to grow fruit trees for my family without water? And he sent me out to the woods and he showed me how he grows everything out there without water or just rainwater. And I got it. It's all about a covering. And I had this most fantastic orchard that produces incredible fruit that's never been watered for 34 years. I had this abundant garden. And it's just amazing how well everything does under cover. And it's so pathetic how we as human beings, when we come to a place, take the cover off and don't get it. <laughs> it's just, and again, it's so simple. <laughs> right. And, and you've been, been uh, using the starting method for how long? Did you say 35 34 years? 34 years at this place. Okay. Okay. And now, in, in, and I know this is going to be hard to do because we could talk for hours about your, your gardening. Uh, but in a nutshell, how does your gardening style method differ than conventional gardening? What is it that you're doing that's working so well? I never expose the ground. I never cultivate it, till it. I just apply a cover, and nature does everything perfectly. It's that simple. How do you apply the cover? What, what? I guess uh, since since we're we're uh, speaking on the phone, it's kind of hard to communicate what we see so much in the the video. Uh, back to Eden, at backtoedenfilms.com. What are you covering the ground with? I live in Western Washington, where we have a lot of trees, and so I used chip tree branches, chip, branches of, of a of a tree that went through a chip root that have all the needles and leaves and and some you know small wood parts. And that's what I use to cover the ground. So, which is different than just straight wood chips or sawdust, correct? Yes, because you want the green. It's the needles and leaves that happen in nature every year that maintain the the whole planet. And we got to wake up. It, that's what it is. And it just you know, and so chip branches is eighty percent needles and leaves. That is an ideal material to cover the ground with. Okay, so you, you're basically covering your garden. We have the same type of covering that you would would see walking around in the woods where there are no irrigation lines, where there are no people to pick weeds. Exactly. Correct? Yep. Okay. Now, you, you mentioned that you live in uh, northwestern Washington, which is an area basically surrounded by greenery. You can get more, more green and woodsy than that. So I think a question that, that I know I would have uh, where I live in southwestern Idaho um, Will it work in my area? What types of soil does this work with? How how does the, the natural terrain uh, play into what you're doing? If you are not living in a desert and things are growing around you that, not, that man is not nurturing, just go there and do what it does. It's that simple. Okay, so I don't necessarily have to live in the woods. I can live um, just anywhere that, that there are other plants naturally existing, correct? Yes. And any cover you have is like, you're a farmer, use your straw. If you're raising grain, use your corn socks. Whatever you're growing, after you take what you want for food, put back, like nature does. It's all about returning. This most beautiful recycle program on the planet, and if we're just paying attention, all of nature has been doing this for 6,000 years with no work from <laughs> anyone, and everything works great. It's all about recycling. Everything goes back. Instead, we take it all off, and then put chemicals back and wonder why we're all sick and nothing's growing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, now, now, speaking of, of putting things back and, and doing it artificially, we had spoke earlier about um, a gentleman that was surprised at the celery, the quality of your celery. Uh, could you uh, basically tell us that story again about his thoughts on, on your fertilizing and how that, that worked out? I 
have a I had this summer a ton of people coming on tours and a and a PhD biologist showed up on a tour and he's looking at my garden, he's seeing the size of my celery, the dark green, the size of it, and he says, There's no way you get anything this size without fertilizer. And I says, I don't fertilize. He says, I don't believe you. I'm gonna come back and test your soil. I says, Well, you're welcome, come back. And so he tests my soil and I just love it. Here if you go to college, they'll tell you wood products, type nitrogen, make your soil acidic. He tested my wood chip soil in my garden, and the pH was 7.0. The guy was in shock. He says, no way. And I says, well, I, didn't, I, I don't know anything about your test, but um, if it's what it says, go, go check somewhere else. They went three other places, and it came every time 7.0. And I love the nature. It's perfect. 7.0 is right. exactly balanced, the most perfect place everything grows in, and that's what nature does all by itself with no assistance from me or anybody else. I love it. So you're not using any petrochemicals. You're not putting any salts in the soil. Um, no, no carriers. You're just letting nature do what it's doing, and you're growing vegetables in that same situation. Yes, and what's so awesome is that my challenge in my garden is things grow too fast. I have too much, and I can't contain them. Every <laughs> year it gets better and better because it's so common sense. You see, as that stuff is breaking down, more is going into the soil than the plants can take out. And so I have this compounding interest situation going on. So every year it gets better and better and better. And I'm doing nothing. It's just the natural natural response. And, and uh, speaking of doing things naturally, I remember looking at one of the other videos that we saw about you um, where you were talking about your potatoes and how your potatoes were so... Uh, big, they were so good looking, and you told the person that you didn't dig the ground, that the creator doesn't dig holes and plant potatoes in them, that we should just lay the potatoes on the ground. Um, but there's an, an important thing that I want you to tell everybody about what potatoes you put back. What What is your method for choosing which potatoes you plant back to the ground? I take my most my biggest and best shaped potatoes and I plant that back because I'm investing in my future. By taking your finest seed stock and plant back, you'll keep improving the quality of your food. It's, it's, such, it's so stupid. We take out the smallest potatoes and we cut them and plant that back. Put your best back and keep improving your seed stock. And I'm telling you, the potatoes I have now are way bigger and nicer than the ones I bought because I keep putting my best back. And you're planting the whole potato back, yeah, correct? Yeah, the whole potato, yeah. Because you see the potato starting out is what feeds the plant. That's what the, that takes the sprouts come off, and, and the roots are feeding off that potato. So I want to give my potato a lot of food, all the abundance I can to produce wonderful potatoes. You know, again, it's just common sense. Why do you want to reduce or cut back, you know, what, what you're trying to produce? Give it the best up front, and you'll get a higher return. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's just amazing because uh, – Naturally, we would, we would want to take a large potato um, or or any other plant that we're gathering seed from and divide that up and make many plants out of it. But you're doing better by giving uh, the plant its own natural resource, which is the entire potato, which just seems to be the obvious choice for us. But yet we, we some for some reason, choose not to do that. Um, Another interesting thing that we had spoken about, which I thought your your insight was was fairly amazing, was bugs. Let's switch the the gear a little bit from beautiful gardens to pesky bugs. How do you handle bugs in the gardening system that you're using? The same way I handle bugs that want to attack my body by maintaining a healthy, vital immune system. Bugs don't bother me. By maintaining a healthy environment for my plants, my plants are healthy and bugs don't bother them. It's very simple. Bugs never attack healthy plants. They only take out weak, dehydrated, stressed plants. Now we're going to put some pictures of uh, the potatoes, which we just spoke about. Uh, we're going to put some pictures of your cabbage. There's a number of, of plants we're going to put there. And I noticed while I was looking through the pictures uh, that we have, my cabbage last year, I grew them in a, in a raised bed in the backyard, and they had all kinds of earwigs in them. They had uh, holes from slugs, which we were fighting with all year. Your cabbages, even the outlying leaves, don't have any holes in them. 
they're they're almost museum pieces. They're, the leaves are perfectly formed, and there's no holes in them. So it, it seems to me, from the evidence that I've seen, that what your system is that you're using, which is nature's way, producing healthy plants, seems to be working quite well. Um, are there any other plants that you've you've dealt with that you didn't have as good a luck as as what your uh, film seems to show? Were there any problems or, or hurdles to get over with? Um, issues with your gardening method? When I first started, I had all those issues because my my ground wasn't well. Today, everything is maximum beautiful, totally awesome, and it's because of its, its health. You know, like it's just to me, it's just so simple and so obvious. It's just not like not hard. You know, and if you look at it, the history of of agri- agriculture, insects never took out plants in large numbers until the introduction of chemical fertilizers. People for thousands of years grew their food and didn't lose them to insects. Insects happened after chemical fertilizers were used because the plants were not being well fed and they were weak. And instead of science coming to the plate and realizing this is not working, they created insecticides to kill the insects. This is stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, the insects keep building immunity to the insecticides. They don't think they're taken out. You want to correct the problem. And the insect is telling you your plant's not well. So instead of killing the insect, correct the problem. Either water, you know, get, put more nutrition back, improve the growing environment, and the insects leave. Mm-hmm. That, that absolutely makes sense. I, I think that's absolutely amazing. Um, and then another point that I wanted to cover, uh, which I think um, is also important, not only just the, the maintenance of weeds, the um, letting the bugs handle themselves, the giving back to your garden. How does your gardening method allow one person to maintain the size garden you have? I believe you said you have a four-acre garden. Well, I have, I'm on a five-acre property. My, my, my garden space is probably less than an acre. I have three large plants, oh, okay. about an acre acre max, you know, all of it. Okay, so and how I, does how does your gardening method assist with you managing that, that entire space? Because I never have to disturb the ground. I never have to prepare it. My only tools are rake. It's very easy. It's very, very cooperative. It's not It's not opposing me. It's making it really, really comfortable and easy. And again, I appeal to... The there's there's, no there's one thing I'm, I'm trying to get you to talk about, and it's the fact that when we when we look at the pictures, and we'll, we'll post pictures of this as well uh, here in the article, there's no mud. You have no mud on your farm. And there's no mud in nature. Anywhere in nature where man hasn't been, there's no mud. Mud is only a result of man taking the cover off. Mm-hmm. It's true. Um, also, uh, with with man taking the cover off, that gets us to the, the very important role of weeds. When, uh, when we were talking about weeds, you explained the weeds as being a scab that protect uh, the soil. Could you, could you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, I was given an amazing analogy because um, I asked the creator, you know, what, what's this whole issue about weeds? Why do they happen? Here's what he shared with me. He says, he says, weeds to the exposed ground is the same as a scab to your skin. When you break your skin, the tissue below is vulnerable, and the body immediately creates a scab to protect that tissue until the skin heals in. And it's ugly, the scab. The same is in nature. When man takes a cover off the ground, the ground is vulnerable, and nature covers it with weeds to protect it from washing and blowing away. I love it, man. Nature is totally connected. It's just we that are disconnected. And what amazed me is my garden, when I used to row to till, in five to seven days after I till, it would be solid green with weeds. The same garden, mm-hmm. the same geographical place, with the same weeds he's blowing in because it's covered, I have no weeds. Nature is so in tune. I love it. The same place because the coverings there, weeds don't happen. They don't need to need to be there because the ground's covered. That is absolutely amazing, Paul. And and again, we want people to uh, take a look at the links that we're going to have here in the article. Uh, we want you to go to uh, backtoedenfilm.com. Uh, watch it. Take some time. Take some notes while you're watching this uh, video. Uh, Paul, we'd like to thank you very much for being with us and talking to us a little bit about uh, the video and your gardening method. And I really think that it would revolutionize the way a lot of people uh, treat their gardens when they see this. So uh, once again, Paul, thank you very much for taking the time to, to speak with us today. You're so welcome.